Welcome to section one, the key concepts of release management. We have a total of seven sections in this course. And this is the first one. The exam syllabus for this section is to understand the key concepts of the practice. In particular, we will explain the purpose of the practice, describe the practice success factors and key metrics of the practice, and explain key terms and concepts such as release, CICD, release management, release model, and push-pull conditions. We begin with the purpose of the practice. The purpose of the release management practice is to make new and change services and features available for use. There are some key words here. Firstly, made available for use. Then the next statement here is, this is as per organization's policies and agreements with customers, meaning the releases are done in line with those policies and agreements. And uh, the term deployment comes close to the term release. So release is a sort of deployment. However, deployment is concerned only with moving components into the desired environment rather than making the service and features available for use. So we need to differentiate between these two. Release is making the services and features available for use or any changes to be also made available for use, whereas deployment is only to move the components into the desired environment before they are made available for use, which means deployment happens first and then followed by release. Some examples of release could be that the, um, uh, the environment is being made available for use, the service documentation is being made available for use. So it need not be only a production environment. It can be any live environment, uh, such as a development environment, a test environment, or a staging environment also. Digitization has impacted this practice as software management methods are now being applied to infrastructure and documentation also. And that's why I gave examples um, that there can be a release for documentation or a release for um, uh, a product or a service. So this practice supports the onboarding and offboarding of customers and users. And uh, it is through this practice that the customers and users have their first touch points and interactions with the service provider. And uh, it is through this practice that organizations are able to uh, subsequently deliver any service updates. So since we were speaking about deployment, uh, in ITIL, deployment means the moving of service components to an environment, but does not make them available for use. So deployment could mean uh, things such as installing the hardware, committing the code of the appropriate version, and automatically or manually setting up the environment, uh, verifying the service components and functionality, verifying the target environment as correct. Um, these are done in a controlled manner, but it doesn't imply that the service had been made available to users yet. And that's when the release practice comes in. In fact, deployment and release are very close to each other. There can be sometimes overlapping activities between release and deployment management. So the summary on this slide is from an exam perspective is, uh, releases are made available for use. They need to be as per policies or agreements. Um, they um, are closely connected with uh, onboarding and offboarding of users and customers, and they um, they create the first user touch points um, or service interactions uh, of the organizations with their uh, uh, users and customers, and uh, it facilitates service updates. And we need to differentiate between release and deployment. Now we move on to the benefits of this practice of release management. Uh, there can be benefits for both the service provider as well as the service consumer. For uh, the service provider, uh, the benefits are the following. They have a controlled enablement of new and changed services uh, for users. They are able to experiment and test hypotheses with different user groups. Uh, they have reduced risks and losses resulting from releases. And the provider has a better image due to smooth and timely release of IT services and there is a higher user and customer satisfaction because of these. Now the hypothesis and the experiments, uh, these can be related to, uh, these are outside the syllabus, but uh, for example, you might have heard about A or B releases in which uh, two versions of the same feature or functionality, um, but these uh, two versions are presented uh, in two different ways therefore, and they are tested with two separate user groups in order to obtain the feedback. And uh, the group that provides more satisfying feedback uh, is then released to all the groups or to both groups. 
So that's why it's called A or B testing. So it allows uh, organizations to make business decisions on where to invest money. Should they invest uh, money for option version A or for version B where there is more user traction? We move on to the benefits for the service consumer. And these are the following, controlled enablement of new and change business services for users. The, the term here is business. And uh, then we have reduced risks and losses resulting from releases. And there is better image due to smooth and timely release of business services and a higher client and employee satisfaction. So we need to be able to differentiate uh, on the benefits between uh, uh, for service provider versus the consumer. And the differences are mainly uh, on the provider side, we see the mention of IT services uh, for users, whereas uh, on the consumer side, we see the mention of business services for users rather than IT services. And uh, on the uh, provider side, we see the combination of user and customer satisfaction, whereas on the consumer side, we see the combination of client and employee satisfaction. But there's one benefit common to both uh, provider and consumer, and that is the reduced risks. And for the provider, we have a unique benefit that is ability to experiment and test hypothesis before the release is actually implemented. Now, uh, next is to understand what a release actually means. A release is a version of a service or any other configuration item or a collection of configuration items that is made available for use. So it can be a a specific service or a, which will have service components and it can also include even contract documentation, certain metrics uh, and so on. So it is not something which is just a physical hardware system or a software application, but other things I mentioned such as documentation, contracts, service level agreements and so on. And uh, release and deployment may be combined, particularly when user training is not required, which is usually the case with hardware and large monolithic systems. And performing release separately from deployment is more common in digital environments and can be performed in a simple or complex way. So what this means is uh, the deployment and release may be combined if it is only to set up the environment and make it available to users, as simple as that. But usually there are other activities such as user training and communications to users and support teams and even early life support of the product and just after it has been released to users. And that is better done with release as a separate step because release can involve a lot of uh, activities, as I just mentioned, uh, for onboarding the users after the deployment has been done, meaning after the environment has been made ready via deployment first. Uh, by the way, by early life support, I mean uh, educating support teams, creating knowledge articles for self-service, keeping developers on standby for any go live issues. So when these things are needed, uh, we need to have release as a separate practice after deployment is completed. And uh, this separation uh, is more needed in, uh, in digital products and environment, uh, whereas in traditional large monolithic systems and hardware components, uh, these two practices were generally performed as a single step, meaning deployment and release were combined into a single step. And uh, these uh, approaches, whether to do them separately or combine them, are called release management approaches. And therefore, different product architectures and software lifecycle models will require different approaches. And also how these will work for specific products, not just architectures, but specific products or consumers will be described in something known as release models. So we have the release approach uh, first based on the product architectures and software lifecycle models, and the release model for specific products or specific consumers who are using specific products. And the models actually describe release procedures, release authorities, the release plan formats, and the release communication formats. 